do you remember your experience in BMT? BMT oh. is basic military training. So that's where you <laughs> you went, you chose your job, and now take us to how you went to BMT before tax school. Okay, so yeah. BMT. Honestly, I really did not know what to expect yeah. when I went to BMT. Uh, you know, the first thing you do, you get online, you start looking up YouTube videos, trying to get an idea of what I'm getting ready to get into. Yeah. Um, and for me, I went to BMT, I got there March 8th of 2022. Mm -hmm. So this was, they pretty much kind of lifted a lot of the COVID restrictions. Um, my sister-in-law had went in, I think 2020, so she was dealing with all of it. So I'm trying to ask her different questions, yeah. but her experience was completely different from mine. Yeah. So, so she I, went during COVID. Yes. Oh, yeah, so she had a completely different experience. Yeah. Um, so I get there the evening of March 8th and you know, you get there and it's like eerily calm when you get off the bus, no yeah. one's yelling. <laughs> And they're just me? like, yeah. you know, when you first walk into the uh, uh, PRC uh -huh. <laughs> and they give you your backpack, you're walking through the line, getting everything, you get your first MRE. And I'm like, okay, I see the hats, um, <laughs> the hats that are MTIs wear. Yeah. When is the yelling going to start? Yeah. And it didn't start. And we're just all sitting there waiting on it, anticipating it. So then they take <laughs> us over. I was a bulldog. Oh, they wow. take us over and it's uh, late. It might have been like 10, 11 o'clock at night at this point. Oh man, we got there at around late. 2 a.m. Oh, y'all were really late. Yeah, like around 2 a.m. We didn't even sleep. Like, Ooh. we got there at around 1, 2 a.m. Then there was a briefing. Mm -hmm. We left the PRC at around 2.30, 2.45. We went to the dorms and you know, in one hour, two hours, we were like, back okay. up, back yeah, up, yeah. yeah. Well, no, well, I guess I wasn't there that late. But mm -hmm. we get there and you get off the bus and, well, you they park the bus and you see a line. For me, it was just a line of MTIs there. And they just start yelling, get off my bus. They're banging on the bus. Get off, get off, hurry MTIs. up, hurry up. Who's the MTIs? Um, no, those are the... Military training instructors. Okay. Yep. So your, your coaches, your teachers yes. over there. Coaches, teachers, instructors, whatever you want to call them, the ones yeah. yelling at you. Yeah. You know them. They have their smoky bear hats on. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they're just yelling and yelling. And I think the first day the first like two or three days i was like oh my gosh what did i get myself into yeah. this was not at all what i was expecting <laughs> yeah. um but i will say by the end of it it was a great experience it wasn't as bad the first i'd say the first week or two it's a little challenging you're trying to adjust they're trying to get you set up to where you need to be so the first two weeks them trying to get you in a routine um trying to reset your mental uh it's it's different it's a challenge but once you get into the routine um it's actually a much it's it's not it's not bad it's not hard um it's much easier than what i expected <laughs> did you at one point think i just want to go home i would say maybe the first or second day uh -huh. i started to think i this maybe <laughs> this isn't for me yeah. um but then i will tell you one of the things that got me i was like well if my sister did this i know i can make it through and then she uh -huh. told me she was like you'll have some days where it seems a little tough but you'll be fine um but as the weeks progress you you kind of get a feel for your mtis you get a feel for the people around you you start working together better you just start doing better overall because you know what to do what to expect um and it just makes the experience that much better after six and seven and a half weeks mm -hmm. right you graduate bmt mm -hmm. how did it feel after this struggle <laughs> oh my goodness so bmt graduation was an experience like just none other especially i'll tell you one of the the moment that just felt magical for me was um just standing there getting coined and you hear the music playing oh it's just that was a, a moment that you just can't explain it's just you're so proud of yourself you look around at all of your wingmen and you know that everything you've gone through with them mm -hmm. everything you all have endured together to see we all made it here we all went through the struggle together yeah. we went through just so much together to get right here and for me um to have my family witness that especially um my husband no my husband my father and my sister were there as well as my children and my cousin but my husband my father and my sister they know what I wanted to do 10 years ago. So for them to be able to see me in that moment. That was a proud moment. Yes, a very yeah. proud moment. And yeah. I was an honor grad. So if you, undergrad means that that's the cream 
de la cream. That's the top of the top. If you graduate undergrad, you've, you've, you're the best of the best. Actually, the certificate says you've met the criteria of being the best of the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everyone who graduates basic military training is a good wingman, is, a, is the best. But if you get honor grad, you're, yep, you're the top 10% of your squadron if yep. you, you make honor grad. Yeah. Um, so to be able to show my family, like, look, I came here, I conquered this, you know, it just, it opens your mind to so much more and lets you realize I'm capable of so much more. I can just do so much. So that feeling when you're standing there, it just, it cannot be explained. It's just something that can be experienced. How did you feel when you they gave you the coin? The, the coin that symbolizes that right now you are an American airman. Oh my goodness. It, I, you just, you can't explain <laughs> and it. And the music just, is playing in yeah, the background. I, and you're so quiet, your sergeant <laughs> comes, shakes your hand. Yes. And you. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's amazing because the same person that's been yelling at you for the past, <laughs> what, seven, eight weeks, yeah. now they're handing you a coin and you can just see it in them, how proud they are. So um, you've been coined, you've crossed the threshold. Most people don't even make it there. I'm sure even in BMT, there are people who, who were sent back home, mm -hmm. who did not survive the experience. Mm -hmm. That was a proud moment for you and your family. Yes, yes, very proud moment for me. How did you graduate with um, honors? How, what, what, were, what activities did you indulge in? So for me to graduate with honors, I was actually involved in quite a few things. So in the beginning, I was a chapel guide. I ended up being an element leader. Oh, the child runner thing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was a child yeah. runner, but that doesn't give you points for honor grad. But it makes you, sets you apart uh, uh, from the rest because you've uh, you've had the leadership experience. Yes, yes, yes correct. Uh -huh. So I ended up being an element leader, mm -hmm. but uh, in order to get to the element leader position, I was a child runner, not by choice. I was actually kind of, swindled into that. So a chow runner is, um, oh, define a chow runner. So the chow runners, before your flight can go into the dining facility to eat, someone has to go in there to let the MTIs know, um, hey, my flight is out here, we're ready to eat, this is where we're coming from. That's but it's actually, not as pretty <laughs> as that sounds. It's not that simple. No. You go there, you're marching, you make turns, you make turns, yes. and you say, such a uh, blah, 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 flight, one, two, three is prepared to enter the dining facility from the east side, and then they will tell oh, you. Oh man! <laughs> and if you mistake, if you make a mistake, what, what would happen? Oh my goodness! <laughs> if you make any type of mistake, like yeah. let something not be right on your uniform, <laughs> if your hands aren't pinned right, if your yeah. face and movements are not right, yeah. oh, all the MTIs in there are just going to start yelling. Yeah, actually, it's called uh, a snake pit. Yeah, the snake pit. Oh, yeah. they're gonna all start yelling and screaming at you. Yeah. And eventually I ended up being the first uh, child runner for my flight. So, um, I mean, it's after you do it a few times, you, you understand what you're doing. You start to get good at it, uh, good at it. But of course, no one wants to do it because who wants to get yelled at? Yeah. So Attention, eventually, no. yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> unnecessary yelling. Yeah. So my MTI <laughs> saw that I was getting good at it and she told me, she came to me, she said, Turner, I see you, you're building up that confidence. I like that. That's great, keep it up. So she actually chose the element leaders for um, my flight. And when she chose, she called my name to be an element leader. Um, element leaders can get fired. If you're not doing your job, they yeah. will fire you. So yeah. none of our actually, element leaders got fired. You, yeah. you mean element leaders or child? Or child runner? Uh, oh no, the child, oh, child runners child get fired too. But if, if you're you get, good, you get, you're a good, good at your job as well, still you can get fired. Yeah, so if you get fired as a child runner, that's a good thing. Uh, yeah. you generally, usually it means you're doing really well. They're yeah. tired, of, tired of seeing you. They want to see someone new so that um, someone else can do it. Now, I will say as a reservist, we had an MTI come talk with us uh, back at one of my drill weekends. And he put a spin on it, which is a very positive spin. Mm -hmm. He recommended that everybody be a child runner at least once. He said, uh, you take a test on your drill movements towards the end of basic training. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing, if you're a child runner, they all are going to judge you and yell at you based on your drill movements. Mm -hmm. So when you get up there, you're not gonna just do any sloppy looking drill movements. They're gonna be on point when you're in front of the MTIs. So it is a way for you to get better at your face and movements. Um, that's the spin he put on it. It still is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so being a child runner, uh, that kind of showed my leadership skills, my ability to my MTI. So when it came time to pick element leaders and dorm chiefs, she selected me as an element leader. 
um, and you get points towards being honor grad. So being dorm chief and element leader give you the highest amount of points. So it just sets you further apart um, to become an honor grad. Awesome. If you have anything you feel that you might contribute to the society, please don't just hold it in. The opportunity is there. Put yourself out there and be able to serve uh, your fellow wingmen in various capacity. Mm -hmm. That will also look good in your, uh, in your performance report, mm -hmm. if you like. What was the lowest moment for you um, in, in BMT and in tax school where you felt like, I just want to go home or this is too hard for me, this is too much for me. What was that moment where you almost changed your mind? Um, so BMT for me, I think my lowest moment there would have to have been when um, I got a phone call. Well, we got our phone calls. Um, I called my husband and instantly I could tell something wasn't right. So I'm like, what's going on? And I found out that his best friend passed away. Um, so that was by far the hardest moment in BMT. And I wasn't one in BMT to do crying or be sad. I'm a very happy, just bubbly person. Um, so of course, when I got that news, I was a mess, I was crying. Um, and that just wasn't like me. So I will say it was in that moment that I kind of found found out a little more, you know, our MTIs are people. So I ended up letting my MTI know what was going on. And they're people, they realize that we're people, even though they're always yelling at us, they're always screaming. Um, they do take what we have going on seriously. So they actually, um, they kind of, they took it easy on me. I, found, I got the call in the evening and I remember it was before we took showers um, because I was just sitting to myself while everyone else was doing, doing their thing. And they just kind of gave me my space. And then the next day they allowed me to have an extra phone call to check in on my family. Um, so it is like those moments, everybody has things going on back at home, but they, they are still people. They realize we're still people. Um, and that was the hardest moment for me in BMT. But you just have to remember at the end of the day, what you're there for, what your end goal is, yeah. and, and just push through you're it. Yep. You're why. Um, so perseverance is a must just overall in life, not just in the military. So that was by far the hardest moment for me in BMT. Um, in tech school, cool. <laughs> my hardest moment was uh, getting recycled. So I actually got recycled a week. Um, you were sent back. Yep, sent back one week mm -hmm. uh, to the class behind me. So I did not graduate with my original class. Uh, I graduated with the class that was the week behind my original class. So uh, when you go through the medic training, all you hear about is the NREMT, the NREMT. Oh my goodness, it's so hard. So many people don't pass. That's all you hear about. I passed the NREMT on the first try. Um, so I was just like, yes, I made it. I passed it. The hard part is done. Yeah. The second part to becoming an EMT is the hands-on portion skills. And people don't really harp on that too much because it's the easier part. I failed. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, I missed, I, I passed two of the two harder ones, medical and trauma were the two I passed and I failed the rest. So failing, I failed too many, so it sent me back a week and I was devastated by it. Um, it hurt to know I'm not graduating with the rest of my class. I had to go to their graduation and watch them and don't get me wrong, I was happy for them, but it hurts just knowing that's where I was supposed to be. But um, in your failures, you just have to, again, you have to persevere. Realize that everything happens for a reason. I'm gonna make it through this, and I did. I passed with flying colors. The second time I went through skills, I passed with flying colors. I was put in a new class, aced the rest of the tests. It's three tests that you have after you do NREMT and skills. Right. I passed all of those with flying colors, right. and I leave tomorrow. <laughs> uh, um... During that period where you encountered failure and captured failure by its, by, by its horns, what did you learn from that after battling failure and picking yourself up, going to a different class, studying again, and now you've aced it? Mm -hmm. So what I'd say, what I learned from failure is just don't let it beat you down. Um, take your moment to be upset, to cry, but you have to press, you have to move forward, you have to persevere. So if you just let your failure get you down, you're gonna stay down. 
Uh, you have to use that to motivate you and push you, use it for fuel. So um, I did, I, I did let it get me down. And that same day I, I was going off base. I was in an Uber and I'm just in there sulking in my sorrows, just, oh, it's the worst day. Yeah. And everything happens for a reason. So I'm in the Uber. My Uber driver was a young guy in the army and he ends up talking to me. He's like, well, I, if, if I can tell you something personal, um, he told me he had, he just got over cancer. He was 21, thought he was getting ready to die. It was not looking good for him. And they ended up getting rid of all of his cancer. And it just opened my eyes. I'm over here just thinking it's the worst day ever because I'm getting recycled just one week. I'm going back one week. I know the material. I know have, I get a second you still have chance. Your health. Yeah, you still I have, have my health. And this guy younger than me, much younger than me, is going through things that I couldn't even imagine. So um, it was one of those experiences, kind of humbling, like, you know what, just shut, you know, just, just hush up about it. You're doing just fine. Um, look at what he's going through. So again, everything happens for a reason. My failure was for a reason, and it had to get me to reset my mind to be able to push me through nursing the way that I needed to be pushed because I flew through nursing. I passed all of those tests with very high scores. Um, and I think had it not been for that failure, that wouldn't have happened for me. Wow, wow. <laughs> I don't know if I will ever get any other guest that will beat A1C Turner, my <laughs> friend. So as we conclude this episode, and I'm sure we'll have many more episodes online mm -hmm. because you're going to a different base right now. Yes. Yeah, um, for anyone who's watching, who's um, on, the, on the fence, they don't know, they're not sure, um, they might take 10 years before they make that move mm -hmm. or maybe they just want to make that move right now uh, Others are particularly interested in the medical field or any other job or the Air Force in general What's your view now since that you've been able to at least maneuver and beat the odds that most people have not been able to do two, twice BMT tax school and now you're going operational <laughs> in the United States Air Force, not any other Air Force, United <laughs> States. She's made it. So what's your view, General? So um, if you are interested in joining the Air Force, I would 100% recommend doing this. Um, I couldn't imagine not being here. 10 years ago, I was supposed to be going into the Navy, and I'm glad that things didn't <laughs> go as planned. Um, yeah, um, everything happens for yes, a reason. Yes, everything happens for yeah. a reason. So yeah. I would 100% recommend this. Um, and then going in now, um, with much more wisdom, just being a little bit older. Mm -hmm. uh, I just had a different view of it. I knew what I wanted coming in here. I know what I want to get out of here. So I came in here, did my best, and I've enjoyed every bit. So especially if you want to go in as a medic, the program has been awesome. It's a lot that you're doing in a little bit of time, but it is so rewarding. It's so fulfilling. And um, I can't wait on the civilian side as well to see how these skills transfer over. So if you are interested in the military, I say go for it, but I'm, I'm rooting for, shooting for you to join the Air Force. <laughs> yeah, I'd say no matter the kind of job that you end up getting or what you or what you choose by the time you leave your tax school you will have a skin for the game you will know what you're doing and you'll be able now to speak authoritatively on your field mm -hmm. without fear of reprisal so this has been your episode the first and the one and only a1 sitana has opened the curtains mm -hmm. for us as we proceed forward, I'm hoping that I'll host her again. And I've been your host, A1C Joe, and this is... A1C Turner. Until next time, <laughs> thank you.